Hebert. Here's the defense you'll be looking at. Charles Mann, Dave Butts, Darrell Grant, and Dexter Manley up front. The three linebackers, Coleman, Okowitz, and Wilbur Marshall. And in the secondary, Wilburn and Green, the cornerbacks, Todd Bowles and Alvin Walton. The deep men. The Redskins show them nine in up front. Now they back out just a bit. Reuben May starts with Buford Jordan. For the Saints. They the Mays and Abair to work. So Buford Jordan out of the backfield complete. Covered and stopped by Wilbur Marshall. The Saints backs and receivers. Bobby Abair, the quarterback. Mays and Buford Jordan they just caught that pass. In the backfield, Eric Martin and Lonzel Hill wide, and John Tice, the tight end. Up front, a lot of injuries have affected the Saints. Dombrowski, Hilgenberg, Court, Trapillo, and Brad Gilbert. Eric Martin split wide right, Lonzel Hill to the left. Pickup of about five stopped by Daryl Green. Looks like Daryl Green's going to stay with him wherever he goes. Yeah, he's going to be on Lonzel Hill today. And as Jim Mora told us last night, uh, he doesn't think they're going to be able to run today. He said, we'll try, but I don't think it's going to work. He said, if we're going to win the game, we have to do it throwing. He said, a lot of this game is going to be on Bobby Bear's shoulder. So they start out, their first two plays are uh, passing. Brings up. A second and six. New Orleans ball. And Abair gives to Mays, and Mays out of there with a first down and much, much more. Neil Okowitz finally gets him out of it, out of bounds after a gain of 21 by Mays. You have to be interested, uh, impressed with what the Saints are doing here, Pat. That this is a three-wide receiver formation. I think they wanted to make them think they were running, and then they passed. Then they gave them a passing formation, and they broke Reuben Mays off to the left side for a big run. Mays has been somewhat frustrated, somewhat uh, unhappy, because he hasn't been playing much. Now they line up. And the tight end, Tice, moves from right to left. And the Redskins, 45, a there to work. Headed for Eric Martin. Covered by Barry Wilburn. Atlanta shut out Green Bay 20 to nothing. Cincinnati overwhelmed Pittsburgh. Rams coming back. That one's not over. That, of course, a big one to the Saints. About five minutes left in that game. And the Rams down by three. Second and ten. Ball at the Redskin 45. A bit of a different offensive alignment. Buford Jordan split wide to the left this time. That's Lonzel Hill in motion. And off Mays. Mays scampers down close to the 40. Maybe a pickup of five. Stopped by Charles Mann. Gives us a chance now, John, I think, to look at the Redskins' defensive alignment. Well, what you can see there is the Redskins were always in a, a four-man line type of thing, and I think that's what Jim Mora was thinking is so tough to run against. When you get big Dave Butts and Daryl Grant inside, so he would rather pass on that and then maybe run against some of their pass defenses. Third and five, and Bear goes back with Jordan. This time in the spread formation, the shotgun. Redskins have a lot of folks ready to rush. Incomplete intended for Lonzel Hill. One thing about Bear, he will get rid of the ball in a hurry, not be sacked very many times. And there's an excited Daryl Green. We asked Daryl Green yesterday who he was going to cover. And he said, I'm going to cover number 87. Of course, that's Lonzel Hill. I don't know if Green knew his name or not, but defensive players tend to talk that way. They just talk In about numbers. the other guy in numbers, yeah. 
Ryan Hansen to kick and Anthony Allen back for the Redskins and he's going to run with it. Dropped it. And so he won't run with it. He put it on the ground and Doug Williams comes in to lead the Redskin offensive unit. He'll be looking at a 3-4 alignment. Frank Warren, Tony Elliott, and Jim Wilkes up front. Four good linebackers, Ricky Jackson, Sam Mills, Vaughn Johnson, and Joe Colbrand in place of Pat Swan. And in the secondary, Milton Mack, Van Jakes, Brett Maxey. It is a defensive unit without a lot of great names, but with a very effective result. Williams to Kelvin Bryant. Outside the 15, about the 18, stopped by Sam Mills. Washington backs and receivers. Williams, the quarterback, Kelvin Bryant. Usually the lone setback, Monk, Clark, Greg McEwen, and Donnie Warren. McEwen's the H back. A rebuilt offensive line, Lachey, McKenzie on the left side, Bostic in the middle. Tealman to Bostick's right. Clark. That was Sanders in motion and Doug Williams. Outside to Gary Clark. Very quick reaction defensively by, by Van Jakes. Yeah, that was interesting, Pat. The Redskins went to three wide receivers. And their game plan here is if they go three wide receivers and the Saints stay with only four defensive backs, they want to pass. If they go three wide receivers and the Saints go to five defensive backs, then they want to run. The Saints stayed in four that time and Doug Williams passed. Four wide receivers for the Redskins. This time Sanders is the move man and Williams goes back to throw. Incomplete intended for Sanders. Those of you who watch the Bears under interim coach Vince Tobin, they beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 28 to 10. Welcome to RFK Stadium. Pat Summerall with John Madden. No score here between the Redskins and the Saints. And a big game for both of those people. Greg Coleman now is the Redskin punter. So long with Minnesota. Good kick. Very steady. Mel Gray handles at the 30. Gray spins to about the 42. Stopped by Greg Minuski. 47 yard punt by Coleman. Return 12 yards. Final score the Patriots, a mysterious team, beat Miami 21 to 10. You never know what's going to happen with them, do you? I'll tell you, and, you know, the minute you think that they're a very good team, they'll lose. And the minute you think they're a bad team, they'll beat someone big. Again, like they did last week. I think that was one of the biggest surprises of the year. Duck Flutie and the Patriots beating the Bears so badly. Flutie had another good day today. They've always been like that. Hey, Bear. Caught by Eric Martin. And Martin fights inside. The Redskin 25 before he's finally taken down by Barry Wilburn. Good effort by Martin. Hey, Martin is one of those guys that doesn't have great speed, great move, man, great hands, and he's leading, he's a leading wide receiver in the league. But he's one of those guys that has a field to get open. Once he gets open, he can he can catch a ball, and after he catches a ball, he can make a little run. I watched Dave Butts here. He came very close to getting Bobby Abair before he throws this one. Abair got rid of it quickly, but he had to. First and ten Saints. Abair again to work. This time to Lonzel Hill. He's inside the 20. The Saints are a banged up team, Pat, and we talked about their two running backs, their starting backs not being here today. They're on their third right tackle, Darren Gilbert, number 77. 
is starting at right tackle. Stan Brock is a regular. He's injured out for the season. Bill Conn's replaced him, got hurt last week. So now they have Gilbert playing there, and he has to block against Charles Mann. Second, they need four. Jordan in motion. Hand off Ruben Mays, and Mays could go to about the two. Pickup of 17, and this guy can play. Just he, looking for a chance. Right, he makes a great cut on this one. You know, usually this type of move, it seems you see on an artificial turf. Watch that move right there, cut back. Now he makes another move there. He puts Todd Bowles right to the ground. Then there's only one guy left, and that's Alvin Walton, who finally gets him before he goes to the end zone. Hey, those were some great moves for Ooh, Grass. Boy. Those are the kind you see on carpet. They were saying to us, Morrow was, and Hebert are saying to us last night, we have to have it from him. So far, they've gotten it. He has to stay healthy the whole game. Hebert, touchdown. Eric Martin. They sort of made it look easy. Minnesota exploded against Detroit 44-17. Those of you who watched that victory by the Vikings, welcome to RFK Stadium in Washington, where the Saints have just scored. Touchdown pass from Hebert to Martin. They lead 6-0, 8-14 left first quarter. Pat Summerall, John Madden. Morton Anderson will try the extra point with Brian Hansen holding. Try to make it 7 of it. Back to the touchdown. You know, this was a very efficient drive. The, the Saints just came down mixing up run and pass. Of course, it ended up with a touchdown pass to Eric Martin. But that was the thing Joe Gibbs said. These guys, they may not have a lot of great players, but they play so well together and so efficient. Watch this. Just a short little roll. Eric Martin came across in motion. Whack, just straight inside the end zone. Well, watch it here from this angle. We'll see Eric Martin is going to come across. Then he's going to end up on the right side over there. Now watch, now watch him see. He starts in motion here. He's going to go across. That gives him three receivers on that side. Just a three-step roll by A there, and whack, he hits Martin. And so the Saints lead it seven nothing with 8:14 left to play in the first quarter. And they looked with that kind of drive very efficient. Four plays, 57 yards. There were a couple of big plays in there. I think Bobby Abear is getting that first pass to Eric Martin. It got him down there under a heavy rush by Dave Butts. And then a fine run by Reuben Mays. Mays has to do it because Dalton Hilliard, who had been starting, has a bad toe. And Jim Mora has said to us, and to everybody else. And we'd like to rest him if we can. Morton Anderson kick off sails deep into the end zone. Jamie Morris will down it there. And he's some weapon too. For an NFL update, let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. Story with the Dallas Cowboys. They've changed quarterbacks in Kevin Sweeney's third touchdown pass under pressure. They're down by eight. The Giants kicked a big field goal, 29-21, two minutes to go, back to pass. 7-0 the Saints over the Redskins. First quarter, 8.08 remaining. Doug Williams, the Redskin quarterback, that has an abdominal pull. Something that uh, is sort of a mysterious ailment. You don't know when it ever gets well, I guess. Well, you don't know until you go 100%. Calvin Bryant gets the shot. Knocked out of bounds by Brett Maxey. You know, we were talking about that injury. The Saints have three players with abdominal pulls. And it seems like that's one that crops up more and more. Yeah, and it's a it's a long-term injury. It's in the in the stomach region, either just above or just below the waist. And as you say, Pat Swilling has it. He's missing his second game now, but he's had that for a month and hasn't really been playing well. Hobie Brenner, their tight end, has been out with it. And then Bill Kahn's, who was the starting right tackle last week, also has that abdominal pull. Second down. They get to Kelvin Bryant again. 
should have and does have, I think, a red skin first down. Stopped by Ricky Jackson and Brett Mexi, but he got nine. I think one thing when Joe Gibbs and the Redskins talk about Redskin football, they're talking about being able to run the ball. You know, being able to get in there and pound it at you. Now, Kelvin Bryant really isn't a pounding type runner. But if you look at this big offensive line, you got a Thielman over there and a May over there and a Donnie Warren as a tight end. And you got a McKenzie and a, and a Lachey on the other side. They have to get movement. And if they do, Bryant with a slashing running can get through some tiny cracks. On first down, Doug Williams gets it out to Art Monk. Golden Mack made the stop, but a pickup of nine. Yeah, let's watch Jim Lachey over there, number 79. He's the left tackle now. He's blocking against Joel Colbrand. When they first got him in a trade from the Raiders for Jay Schrader, he played right tackle because Joe Jacoby was a left tackle. Jacoby is injured now. Lachey has moved back to left tackle. At that position, he could very well be the best in the entire league. At left tackle, Williams gets to Bryant. Another Redskin first down. Stopped by Vaughn Johnson. What a gain of three. week when the Redskins were beaten so badly by Houston. By the way, we watched that tape. The Oilers sure looked great in that game. But the Redskins got away from their run. And uh, and then their, their offensive line was being dominated by the Oilers. And it just, watching the tape of that game, it didn't even look like a, a Redskin football team. First down, Redskins at their own 42. Sanders goes in motion. Williams to Bryant. That old familiar play. That counter play that John Riggins made so famous. He got five yards. Well, you know, let's watch a nose tackle here. Tony Elliott, the defensive man right in the middle of the screen. You see, once he saw that off guard and tackle pull, he started right down the line. He didn't go for that counter play at all. In fact, if he did if he did anything wrong, he overran the counter play. But he's the guy, the nose tackle made him cut back to the inside. So really good running by Bryant, you'd have to say. Second and five. Now Williams goes back to throw. Gets it upfield to Joe Caravello. Now a tight end used to be a nose tackle. He looks more like a nose tackle. Yeah, with that name, Joe Caravelli, he sounds like a nose tackle. You like to see those guys catch a football once in a while. They're playing with two tight ends, Warren and Caravella, and neither one of them catch the ball much. I mean, the Redskins, when they throw, it's either to the running back, Kelvin Bryant, or any one of their three wide receivers. First and ten, Redskins at the St. 46 to Bryant. sort of crumpled as he was hit by Sam Mills. I think he was hurt, Matt. Well, that's always been a question. And Joe Gibbs said to us yesterday, that's a gamble you take when you play Kelvin Bryant because he is such a good pass receiver. When you play him on a regular basis, you take the risk of him being hurt. Yeah, because if, if we watch this, Again, I don't even think he fumbled as much as he is as when he was hit. He got hurt and just let the ball go. What's that? He's he's firing right in there to the middle. See, I'm not sure exactly where he got hurt, but it looked like his left leg is going under right there. Part of it is Sam Mills, the linebacker. The other part was his own guy. But I think he hurt that knee and just said to heck with it, just let go of the ball on the way down. Number 51, linebacker Sam Mills was going to make the tackle there. That's part of it. His left leg is going to get caught right there. And now comes someone else. Right there. Brett Maxey was the second Saint to knock Kelvin Bryant backwards. 
know, Pat, we have this thing now where we where we keep the hits that a running back takes. And in this first quarter already in this game, Kelvin Bryant had 34 hits. So I'll tell you, I don't know that. And that's the thing that the Redskins worried about. You know, can he pound? Can you run him in there every way, you know, every play the way you did at John Riggins or even at Timmy Smith? So now what does it do to the Redskin offense? Assuming that he is hurt, assuming that he won't be back. It's a weapon, a real weapon. Running, obviously, yes. And here he comes off and he looks better than we thought. Well, I think Timmy Smith will do the running. And what Joe Gibbs says, he said to Ray, he'd hate to lose Kelvin Bryant. It's not so much as a starting running back, but as that pass receiving back on third down. And Joe Gibbs says that out of the backfield, this guy, number 24, is the best he has ever seen. He thinks he may be the best that's ever played football. Timmy Smith has taken his place now. They're a fellow of the Colonel Smith. Monk in motion. And off Smith with room. Close to a first down before he's cut down by Dave Weimer. Gain of six. And when then Kelvin Bryant looks a lot better now as they're looking at him on the sideline than he did when it first happened. It looked when he first got hit that it could be either knee that crumbled underneath. And you thank goodness for grass. I mean, those are the kind of things that I always feel are much worse on artificial turf because your foot just grabs to that turf. You can't get any movement there in any yard. Maybe, maybe not. Timmy Smith, the ball carrier. Sam Mills again to tackle. Kelvin Bryant up walking around, no game. I would think the one thing with Kelvin Bryant that's telling you that it's not as bad as he thought is he had a little smile on his face. Uh, you know, Pat, after watching so many of these things, when when they really get it, they don't they don't have any smile there. Just saying to him, are you sure you're okay? And I think he's just saying, I dodged a bullet. They're going to measure. Referee is Dick Hantack. Gordon Wells, the umpire. Well, if they only need that much, I would guess they got to go. Well, I think so. I think at, at this position, you're really just out of field goal range. Even if you punted the ball into the end zone, you're going to pick up 15 yards. I think that this is the ideal time to go for it. I don't think there's any other decision. I just see Kelvin Bryant, Pat. They're taking him into the uh, Redskin locker room. X-rays, perhaps, or retaping, or something. They, of course, have X-ray facilities at the stadium. And Timmy Smith is now the leap back. And Terry Orr is in front of him. And Smith will have the first down for the Redskins. He got a couple. Stopped again by Sam Mills. I think Timmy Smith has come into this game with a lot more life in him. You know, Kelvin Bryant really beat him out, took his starting job away. He had that great game in the Super Bowl. I think he, he has come into this game in these three or four runs. He looks like he's ready to show people that he still belongs in there. And it's a Redskin first down. That's the book on Timmy Smith in 1988 this season. Another crack. Away from one. Gets inside the St. 30. Finally stopped by Milton Mack, but he got seven yards. Ricky Jackson had a shot. In the backfield, he missed. That was a great job by Timmy Smith running here. Watch here. Here's his blocker here that's going to come. He comes over here and misses a block, and Smith still makes a miss and makes a run. Watch that. Caravella comes out there and completely misses Jackson right there, and then Jackson misses Timmy Smith. Or Timmy Smith made Jackson miss him. That was a bad block and a good run and bad tackling. As you said, he's come in with the... Uh, 
rejuvenated spirit. Timmy Smith is the deep back. Doug Williams gives it to him again. And he'll have another red skin first down. Brett Maxey stopped him. But they went behind Lachey and McKenzie, left side. I think that's one of those things with that Joe Gibbs had a talk with the team last night. And gave him that kind of talk where you either put up or shut up. You know, that last year's team was a championship team. Uh, this year's team hasn't been, and if we're going to be, let's see it now. And you look like they've picked up things a notch here, this Redskin team. 10 out of 12 of those plays on this drive have been run. First by Brandt, then by Smith. First down, Redskin. Doug Williams. Gary Clark. By Van Jakes, but a gain of eight. Well, Doug Williams was telling us yesterday about how Gary Clark is the quickest of the wide receivers, and he comes open the quickest. He said, when I'm throwing to Gary Clark, and this is just a little quick pattern anyway. He said, but I have to be ready to throw a ball a lot quicker than I am when I'm throwing to Art Monk. You can see him then. He just took a little quick three-step drop and threw that quick out there to Clark because Van Jakes was playing off. Clark is wide left this time. Monk wide right. Jimmy Smith. Hit at the line of scrimmage, Ricky Jackson and Sam Mills bring him down. He might have gotten a yard. Sam Mills is a guy, they said, who couldn't play in the NFL. He's too short, not quick enough, but they didn't measure his heart. Well, when you look at a linebacker and he's only five foot nine, you would tend to say that guy's not big enough to play. But again, he played in the USFL. Jim Warren knew him from there and said, hey, this guy can play in the USFL, the NFL, any L. So that's the end of the first quarter. The change ends. The Saints lead 7-0 with the Redskins on the move. The Eagles upset the Rams 30-24. to And that further jumbles everything in the NFC West and the East. And makes this an even bigger game as we're in the nation's capital. RFK Stadium, Pat Summerall, John Madden. 7-0 Saints. And the Giants hung on after breaking early. And looking as if they might run away from the Dallas Cowboys. They won 29-21. Pat Summerall, John Madden here at RFK Stadium where the Saints lead the Redskins 7-0. So, jumbled maybe. Let's see what happened. Now, the Giants improved to 7-3. Washington playing, obviously, right now is 5-4. Phoenix playing the 49ers right now, 5-4. The Eagles beat the Rams, so they're 5-5. Five and, five. and Dallas is 2-8. Here's the NFC Western Division situation now. The Saints at the moment still on top at 7-2 and two in playing. The Rams lost to Philadelphia, so their record is 7-3. And, and the 49ers playing Phoenix. Who knows? 14 plays. The Redskins have had the ball. Third down. They need a yard. Terry Orr. They got the yard and more. They got eight, and they got a first down. And you can see again, they've been so successful running the ball. As you said, it's been a 14-play drive, this being the 15th play. I think what they've done is they've, they've brought that Saint defense in. They've got them bunched in. Now they're all worrying about the, the run, and they were able to get Terry Orr out there in the flat and a little rollout pass. First and goal at the seven. Smith. To the five. Hit first by Brett Maxey. Kelvin Brandt. We saw him a moment ago go to the locker room. They are x-raying his neck at the moment. And whether or not he'll be back, 
We'll just have to wait and see. And when he got in on that play, it looked like it was a, a knee thing, and I think maybe originally it was, and then he got to the sideline, and, and uh, his neck was bothering him, so they took him in to x-ray that area. Keith Griffin now has taken Timmy Smith's place, and he's the lone setback on the move. Doug Williams. not supposed to be mobile playing with two bad knees nevertheless keeps it not out of bounds by Antonio Gibson that's the last thing Doug Williams wanted to do is run with this one Pat he has two receivers on his right side you see once he starts to roll right now he's committed to one of those two guys he's telling Griffin to move this way with him he's still covered he can't force it now Clark is the other guy the only alternative he had left was to run that ball. 17 plays. And the Redskins have kept the ball nine and a half minutes. Keith Griffin still the setback. We have to get Doug Williams a skateboard. I think. Here it treats. Gary Clark. With 13.55 left to play in the first half. Doug Williams, it's Gary Clark, and now Chip Miller will try to tie the score with a new holder, Greg Coleman. And he does. Here's the touchdown. That would hurt you if you didn't catch it. My folks just left. RFK Stadium in Washington, the home of the Redskins. Pat Summerall, John Madden, the score is tied 7-7 between the Saints and the Redskins with 13.55 left to play in the first half. 18 plays. Here's the kickoff return, and Mel Gray will do the honors. To the 24, where the Saints will take over. Stopped by Clarence Vaughn. 7-7 tie. First half at RFK. The Saints 7, the Redskins 7. 13-46 left to play in the first half. Thank you, Pat. There's... Oh, excuse me. I'm just going to say who I was. <laughs> and who you were. Go ahead. No, I was just saying Joe Bugle was over there talking to those offensive linemen. The Redskins had an 18-play drive. 13 of those plays were runs. And any offensive line coach and offensive lineman loves that situation. The Saints go now with an unusual alignment. They have Hilliard and Reuben Mays in the backfield together. That's Hilliard in motion. Hebert back to throw. He gets it out to Mays. For a gain of nine, Monty Coleman knocked him out of bounds. Kelvin Bryant, by the way, is back out of the locker room, back on the Redskins sideline, and seems okay. Again, I think when you see a player talking and you see smiles on their faces, that means the news is good news. Kelvin had a little smile. All the people talking to him had a little smile. Hand off made. Hit just as he got the ball by Wilbur Marshall. Somewhere down below, Dave Putz. No gain. Well, the Saints thought it would be tough to run today, and you can see why. When they got all those guys packed in the middle, you see there's Charles Mann is playing in there at nose tackle. Then Dave Butts is the guard. 
and they have the three guys right in there on their center and two guard. I'll tell you, that is tough to run in there against that group, even if Mann isn't in there. Mann again lines up over the center. Butts to his left. Third and short. First down, Saints, covered by Darrell Green. Yeah, you know, that is something new for the Redskins, is, is putting man in there in the middle, because he's usually an outside pass rusher. But I think a couple of things can happen when you see him over there in the center. If they want to run, it gives them another big guy in the middle. Or if it's a pass situation, now he gets to rush the passer against the center. And the center, if they cover those other two people, doesn't get any help. It's just man against the man in front. Hey, man. Incomplete intended for Martin again. Barry Wilburn. Todd Bowles, the defenders for the Redskins. Philadelphia beat the Rams 30-24. Randall Cunningham, three touchdown passes. Giants beat Dallas first time since 1960. Their first year that Dallas has lost six straight. Cincinnati over a Pittsburgh team that really is struggling. Patriots beat Miami. Atlanta shut out Green Bay. Second and ten. Seven seven here. Jordan is the motion man. Hebert, hard to sack, over the head of Lonzell Hill. Minnesota overwhelmed Detroit 44-17. The Bears, without their head coach Mike Ditka, 28-10 over Tampa Bay, and we certainly all wish Mike uh, speedy, healthy, recovery. Until you go to Chicago, what a popular man he is. Hey, I stopped by there the other day, the day after Mike Dickey had his heart attack, was in the hospital, and it was like something had happened to the president. And Mike Dickey is not only respected, he's loved in that city. On third down, Abair tries to go deep, and there is nothing there. Robert Clark was the intended receiver as they went with the four wide receivers. Dexter Manley put a little heat on Bear, but he is very difficult to sack, very difficult to get down. Such a quick delivery and... Yeah, I don't think you're going to... I don't think you're going to sack a Bobby Bear. I think what you do is make him throw the ball when he doesn't want to. And that's what the Redskins did on this last series. Anthony Allen. Return. Put some heat or try to on Brian Hansen, but he gets off the rocket. Flag on the play. Allen feels it at the Redskin 15. That's a fine punt. It's it's more the, like, excuse me, John. One of the things that the Saints really do have is an outstanding kicking game. They're very good special teams, and that's one of the areas that the Redskins are, are struggling in this year is their special teams area. Penalty is going to be against New Orleans. Yeah, and if that... We had tripping. Offense, number 53. It is a 10-yard penalty. We will re-kick. Call against Vaughn Johnson. By the way, information just has come to us that uh, Kelvin Bryant is okay. The x rays were negative and he will return. Again, Anthony Allen back deep for Washington. Brian Hansen back to kick for the Saints.
come after him again. This kick is not nearly as good. But it gets away from Allen. And the result is going to be close to the same. Instead of the 15, it's the 21. 50 yard punt, no return. So no big disaster for New Orleans as the Saints and Redskins are tied 7 7. On a rather cool afternoon in the nation's capital, it's 7 7 between the Redskins and the Saints. With 12 12 left to play in the first half. Timmy Smith is the Redskin runner. By James Gethers after a gain of a yard. Play selection so far. Well, you know, it was interesting. The, the Saints and Jim Moore didn't think that they could win this game by running. So we're going to have to do just enough of it to make them believe that we're going to do it. But if we're going to win, we have to do it by passing. And you see that selection. I think Joe Gibbs wanted to get back to his running game. And I think you see that in their selection. Right back to Redskin football. Run the ball, the big hogs in the line, the dirt, the mud, that type of football. Williams gets to Keith Griffin. Worlds outside before he stopped by Alvin Tolles. Ricky Jackson in that last defensive setup for the Saints was playing right defensive end. But really what he's doing, Pat, is he's taking Pat Swilling's place. And Pat Swilling, when they would go four-man line, would become the defensive end. So in this game, they're having Ricky Jackson do that. He's normally the left linebacker, but when they go to the four-man line, he becomes the outside rusher. Which they're doing right now. Kelvin Bryant back deep for the Redskins. Stays in the block momentarily. Pass almost picked off, intended for Gary Clark. Toy Cook was the cover man. That one was very nearly a Saint interception. And there's no one more upset with that than Toy Cook. He comes in on the nickel package of the Saints. They go six defensive backs. He was in there. He was there waiting for that thing. It was right there, and he dropped it. Boy, when you're a second-year guy and you're playing just on passing down, you don't get a lot of those. Mel Gray back deep with the Saints. Great ball on the punt. It. This one slides off the side of his foot a little bit, but takes a red skin roll. And they down it. Keith Griffin down quickly. 7-7. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Subaru. We built our reputation by building a better car. Wrangler, American Hero Jeans. And by Miller Genuine Draft, cold filtered draft taste. It's as real as it gets. Miller Brewing is the exclusive beer sponsor of today's telecast. Charles Mann of the Redskin defensive unit has just gone to the locker room his place taken on the Redskin defense by Marcus Cook so he'll play left in alongside Monty Coleman first and ten New Orleans score tied 7-7 Bobby Hebert the Saint quarterback here for Jordan Ruben May Caught by Lonzel Hill. What an adjustment he made. That was an amazing play. Bobby Abear had to get away first from, from a big rush by Dave Butts. But watch what Lonzel Hill does to Daryl Green. He gets by him there. Green had to grab him. Then he makes a move here. He gets Green coming back in this way. He sees the ball. He stops and comes back and makes a great catch. I think that was some play by Lonzel Hill. It was also a great effort by Bobby Abear to get away from the rush, scramble out there, and make that throw. A gain of 35 yards off what looked like it could have been disaster for the Saints. 
So they get the first down and move it to the Redskin 31. Please return 30 second clock to 15 seconds. Please return 30 second clock to 15 seconds. After review, the play stands as called. Completion pass. Let's watch here and watch, watch Dave Butts, number 65, put the pressure on Hebert right there. That's the thing that flushes him out of the pocket. Now he's watching there and he makes that throw on the run. And quickly we come back to Ruben Mays and a flag on the play. Stopped by Monty Coleman, a gain of one. But a holding penalty is going to be called against the New Orleans Saints. A lot of stuff going on quickly, John. I know it. Holding, offense, number 65, 10-yard penalty, repeat the down, first down. You see, the yeah. guy that was, the, that was pointing at it was Dave Butts. Usually the guy that is fouled is the guy that points at the guy that they, where it was a penalty on him. That was 65, Steve Trapilla was blocking 65, Dave Butts. And Butts had complained the play before, saying, hey, this guy's holding me. I think it was on that one that he flushed Bear out. He was saying, yeah, I didn't get him because Trapello held me. Mays is a long setback. Eric Martin goes in motion, and Bear backpedal. Colonzel Hill to the 30. Back uh, to, to about the original line of scrimmage, a pickup of 11. Oldkowitz made the stop. Yeah, Bobby Abear is impressive every time we watch him. That, you know, he's not one of those guys who's going to set big numbers. He's not going to throw all those deep passes. People say he's too conservative. Jim Moore is too conservative. But with the players they have, the offensive team they have, the offensive line they have, they're doing what they can do best. Second and nine. And you're so right. Martin. Gain of 12, first down, stopped by Barry Wilburn. You ask the Saints and their opponents, who's the fastest guy? Well, neither one of them are very fast. Neither Eric Martin or Lonzel Hill. All they do is get open. Yeah, the one fast guy they have is Brett Perryman, and he comes in when they go to that shotgun or flush, they call that thing. And that's their speed, but he's not good enough to play every down against these guys. Robert Clark this time split wide to the right down the bottom at the 20-yard line. They there saw it coming and just threw it away. Dave Butts is still talking to Trapello there. He's saying, hey, you're only a second-year guy. I'm playing my 197th game today. That's more than any other Redskin play. I'm telling you, block me, man, but don't hold me. You hear what I told you? There's nothing that frustrates a defensive lineman more than getting help. This is a big day for Dave Butts. His parents are here, wife here, kids here. Honored him before the game. And he gets out there in the pits and some guy's holding him. Honored because he is going to play as of today. More games in a Redskin uniform than anyone ever had. Martin in motion. Hebert gets quickly to Mays. Mays inside the 15. Five-yard gain. Todd Bowles made the stop. It does. Charles Mann, and we mentioned a minute ago, just went to the locker room. And the word on what happened to Charles Mann is that he has a sprained ankle. They're looking at it now, and he may or may not return. Well, the Redskins have their rush guys in there now. We just saw them. Dean Hamill is in there. Steve Hamilton is in. And, of course, Marcus Cook, number 74, is playing in place of Charles Mann. Third and down. And rushes Mandel. Third down and five. Hebert out of the spread. Sends Clark in motion. Flag on the play. They took too long. Correct.
extracurricular activity. Delay, offense, five yard penalty, repeat the down, third down. You know, the Saints are doing a different snap count today. When they get in the shotgun, if the crowd is noisy, if they can't hear, the center, Steve Court, is going to give the signals. He's going to call the cadence. Bobby Abair just starts it with his foot. Court gives it so that all the offensive linemen can then hear the center. And what happened on that play, they just took too long because of the motion. This time, Abair goes up underneath and says to Court, you do it. You call the cadence. And then he goes back. Looked like it surprised him, didn't it? Hey there, touchdown Saints to Robert Clark. Hey, that was an amazing play by Abear. As you said, Court was calling the, the cadence. Abear didn't even know the ball was being snapped. The ball surprised him. He's looking at the defense. He's looking at the receivers. He sees Robert Clark in the end zone and throws it to him for a touchdown and wasn't even expecting the snap. That is amazing. Morton Anderson to try the extra point with Brian Hanson holding now to make it 14 7. Watch this. Abear is looking downfield. He's looking around at the defense. The ball almost hit him right in the middle of the three. He finally gets it, makes a little scramble, finds number 89, Robert Clark, right there for the touchdown. 14-7 Saints. Here's that touchdown play again, John. It looks like Abear was going to step forward to tell his center, Steve Court, something, or call the cadence. He starts to step forward. Watch it. Here comes Paul. Hits him right in the stomach. He said, look what I found. Good protection, and here's Robert Clark. The result is touchdown, and now the Saints kick off. And Anderson gets it on the goal line with Jamie Morris. To the 25. And that's the length of the return. 25. So the Saints lead 14-7 with 6.15 left in the first half. Let's watch the touchdown again. Here's Robert Clark. He's going to run a post. He's going to come up here and right in here. He ends up with getting a double coverage here, but he just splits it. A bear sees him and he hits him right there in the end zone. Watch him out here at the end. You see the, the Redskins are playing a zone. You see, right now, he's splitting the two guys in the zone, just runs right through and beyond them. Abear sees them all the way. Doug Williams back to throw for the Redskins. And that's Gary Clark. Outside the 40, about the 43, a pickup of 18 and a Redskin first down. And an injured sink. Appears to be Van Jakes. You know, when you talk about tough guys, you don't think about little receivers, but... I've always felt that Gary Clark is not only one of the best wide receivers in the league, but he's one of the toughest wide receivers in the league. He'll go inside and outside with equal enthusiasm. The 6.03 left to play in the first half. Van Jakes who took a shot beside the helmet. From his own man, Sam Mills, as he made the tackle. Watch coming right here. Now watch the hit. It's what is known as paint to paint. Hurt to hurt. Well, Sam Mills was coming from his linebacker spot out, and Jakes was coming from his cornerback spot in. Gary Clark went underneath both of them, and they ended up, as you just saw, in the mid-air collision and it's a first down Redskins at their own 44 yard line the Saints leading Washington 14 7 550 left to play in the first half Jimmy Smith is the lone running back Ricky Sanders is the man in motion give to Smith gain of three by 
by Tim Smith. Start by stop by Milton Back and Ricky Jackson. Just to bring you up to date, A Bear is 11 out of 17, two touchdown passes. Redskins went on an 18 play touchdown drive. On first down, the Saints have thrown it 11 times, run it no times. Redskins have the ball, however, now second and seven at their own 47 with five minutes left to play first half. Williams gets it out to Sanders. That's enough for a first. Dave Weimer made the stop. Doug Williams comes back now. When Doug Williams is going to throw to his left, he'll back out as he did that time. If he's going to throw to his right, he turns out. And you saw him that time. By backing out, now you keep your shoulders square to the line of scrimmage so you can see left. When you're right-handed and you turn out, then you shut off that left side. Williams, 8 out of 10. And looking very confident. In fact, both quarterbacks do. Donnie Warren to the St. 35. 49ers leading the Phoenix Cardinals 13-0 in the second. Second down Redskins at the New Orleans 35. Second and two. Smith left side stopped by Weimer again. Gain of one, maybe. You know, it's an interesting thing with this Saint defense. That they, they bring guys in and out. They play different defensive linemen, linebackers. But they, whoever they play, they're all good tacklers. They all tackle well, and they all play well as a group. I don't think that there's any one defensive player there that is one of the best in the league, but collectively, they surround as well as any team in the league. Third down, about a yard and a half. Smith gets a carry. Got the first down. Stopped by Van Jakes, who came back in, and Sam Mill. The one thing we can talk about these quarterbacks and a bear and against Williams both guys being from Louisiana the wide receivers the the defenses but I'll tell you another thing that this game matches is I think two of the best coaches in the NFL and Jim Mora for the Saints and Joe Gibbs for the Redskins guys that whatever wherever they go whatever they have are usually going to come out on the winning side when you add them all up Williams throws on first down Sanders has him out of bounds at about the 20 22 yard line it appears Antonio Gibson knocked him out Redskins figure that Ricky Sanders is like a starting wide receiver they start Gary Clark and Art Monk of course but they list Ricky Sanders as a starter too and because they play as much three wide receivers at one time as they do any other formation Ricky Sanders just about plays as much as anyone. Sanders this time split wide to the left. Inside Gary Clark, starts one to the right, three wide receiver. Williams quickly to Clark. Clark inside the five to about the three. Brett Maxey finally stopped him. Gary Clark is one of those guys that not only gets open, not only catches the ball, but watch this after he catches the ball. Slides to the outside, puts a move on Waymer there, gets a block there by Sanders, makes another move here, and makes a three-yard play, a ten-yard play. And we have a two-minute warning. RFK Stadium in Washington, and it's first and goal Redskins from the three. Emmy Smith is the deep back. And he gets the ball. Smith stopped by Vaughn Johnson just about a yard short. Well, 
Pat Swilling just came into the game. Uh, Jim Morris said last night that he doesn't know if he'd be able to play him or not, and he hoped that he didn't have to. I think that they realize now that the way these drives are so long by both teams, the defenses are getting worn down, and you need all the players you have available, because this is going to be a dogfight for 60 minutes. Second and goal from about a foot away for the Redskins. Smith to the penalty marker down. Someone on the left side of the Redskins offensive line moved. That's going to hurt. I think it was Ed Simmons, too, the extra offensive lineman they bring in. That's always tough. You know, you have to do that to get another big blocker in there. When a guy comes off cold, he's not in sync like the rest of the line. Looks like the Saints are saying to take it. I don't know if they should take that penalty or not whether you take the penalty five yards and still stay second down or you say no and make a third down and let them take their last shot. There still seems to be some sort of a debate about Illegal what... motion, offense, number 76. The penalty is declined. declined. It will be third down. You have to face. Right, 76 is the tight end. That was Ed Simmons. And he was the extra lineman that I was talking about that they bring in. And that happens quite a bit. When a guy comes in, he's away from the play. It's a stupid penalty. There was no reason you jump away from it. They might have lost a foot. Xerox presents. We're in Washington, D.C., the nation's capital. Washington Monument and progress behind it. Wonderful night. Third and goal for the one. From the one. For the Redskins. A minute 16 left to play. First half. Saints leading by seven. Jimmy Smith. Don't think so. Pat Swilling. going to be a big decision for Joe Gibbs. I think you don't want to do it. I think you have to kick the field goal here. I don't think there's any decision because you've already been down there. You've already taken your shots. You took a shot at the right, you didn't make it. You're taking a shot here at the left, you don't make it. Now, you may make it with another shot, and they're going to try it, but I think the percentage play here is you kick the field goal. Doug Williams gets him set. Jimmy Smith, the running back. It's about a foot away. Williams keeps it, and he's going to dance in. He did. 
And I'm sure that's what the Saints were thinking. If you're going to stop them on fourth down, I think when they turned down the penalty, they had confidence in their goal line defense. And I think that was a good move. They stopped them on third, and you have to sell out on fourth. And if they do that, you can't defend them. His kick is mishandled by Mel Gray, and he will down it in the end zone. At the half, a reminder again, the NFL today with Brent Musburger, Irv Cross, and Dick Butkus. Scores and highlights. And we'll be showing you also a tribute to one of the players who's well, really meant so much to this franchise, the Redskins, and to pro football, Dave Butts. Played more games today than anyone ever to wear the Redskins uniform. Amen to me. A yard. And Dave Butts. Watch Dave Butts here. Pat, he's on Steve Trapillo. He's going to take him on man to man. He is so big and so strong that he can just get his hands on him, feel everything, and then get back to the plate. 15 years in the pits. I'll tell you, that is a tribute to anyone. That's the end of the first half with the score. The New Orleans Saints 14, the Washington Redskins 14. Beat of America to D Chevrolet. Back at RFK Stadium, where it is 14 14 at the half. Dave Butts, with his performance and appearance today, has played more games in a Redskin uniform than anyone else and he was honored before the game that's his family well, you know the the amazing thing about Dave Butts the 197 games he the 15 years but the position that he's playing that defensive tackle right in the middle of things where all the action is and the fact that he's never really had a serious injury the record he broke was that gentleman you just saw a minute ago is now the vice president of a bank in Jessup Georgia Lenny Hawes, who for so many years was the center for these Redskins, for Sonny Jurgensen, for Billy Kilmer, for Joe Theismann. But Dave Butts, and for all those years, more games than anyone else. You know, Joe Gibbs said he told the team yesterday, he said, you know, everyone's talking about a career and career ending this and career ending that. He said, I'll tell you what, if you guys want to have a long career, I'll tell you how to have a long career. Look at that guy in the back of the room. Dave Butts always sits in the back of the room. He said, look at that guy. You want to have a long career, do it like him. Don't miss practice. Don't miss games. Play for 15 years. Then you got a career. Joe Gibbs was saying that he gets so much about uh, from younger players saying, I don't want to put my career in jeopardy. He said the way you put your career in jeopardy is you don't show up. You don't play. You start missing games. You start missing meetings. And the way to have that long one is just be there and line up all the time. Dave Butts was saying that he's been there so long that all his friends are gone. Joe Gibbs says he just likes to say that. You know, yeah. He likes to play that loner thing and no one's here. But he's he's a favorite of not only his, his teammates but a big favorite of the fans in Washington, D.C. And always has been, really. He came uh, from St. Louis. A lot of people forget that. Came off a, a, what would have been almost a career-ending knee injury early in his career and has lasted all this long time. It's a remarkable story. Well, you know, you think of all the people that have been here and gone while he's been here, and you remember back to George Allen. Was sure. the coach of the Redskins that uh, brought Dave Butts here. Dyron Talbert. People like that. Billy Kilmer and Sonny Jurgensen, who I just talked about. And you go back through a long, long list. Dave Butts is still here. Some of those guys are still here, but they're announcers and stuff in the booths now. 
Jamie Morris picks it up at about the one yard line. It's cut down there by the Saints as Morton Anderson begins festivities in the second half of RFK. Weimer made the tackle. Washington really has uh, the Redskins really have frustrated Joe Gibbs. And I, I, I guess that, John, is, is the main reason. Well, those those things, the turnovers and penalties, and that was the thing that they wanted to eliminate. And you, and you can see why the score is tied here, because they have eliminated those things. And they've played as good a half of football here offensively as they have in some time. But they haven't had any penalties that have been accepted, nor have they had any turnovers. Jimmy Smith begins the second half in place of Kelvin Bryant. Doug Williams, the quarterback. First down risk, and Smith gets carry. He is cut down after he scrambled for about one yard by Vaughn Johnson. You know, if you look at this pass distribution, this first half has really been a control-type game. And you'll see that uh, Doug Williams has thrown 8 to 10 to his wide receivers, which he does. Now, none to the running backs. That's because Kelvin Bryant has been injured. The tight ends 3-for-3, three three, I think they picked up the slack of the running back. Second down and nine, Redskins from their own 16. Hard Mumps good wide to the right. Sanders and Clark to the left. Matt Swilling, by the way, on defense. And he has Sanders. Sanders still on his feet to the 45. Long Johnson finally cut him down. Dave Weimer the second there. But Williams quickly to Sanders. See, Sanders is the inside guy here. Gary Clark is the outside guy. Again, it's that zone. Now, Sanders gets in front of the deep part of the zone and behind the short part of the zone. And, you know, just going back to what you said about earlier, if you're going to get the ball to Sanders and Clark, you get it there in a hurry. I know. And both Clark and Sanders were open earlier on the left side. Mark Funk was a little slower on the right side. Williams to Smith. Three or four flag on the play. Tony Elliott made the stop. That'll be the first penalty against the Redskins. At least it's been accepted. They had that one just before the half that was turned down when Ed Simmons jumped offside. They both teams have played well in the first half. They've both had offense, 10 yards previous spot, repeat the down, first down. Still first down. That is the first penalty, as John Madden just said. There was one called earlier, but that was declined by the Saints, so that's the first one that's been in effect. First and 20, Redskins back at their own 35. Places Smith, but he's the lone back. To Griffin. Not much. Vaughn Johnson made the stop. Gain of two. You know, the interesting thing that we talked about is the Redskins were going to use three wide receivers, which they're doing. Look, here's one, two, three. Now, if the Saints use five defensive backs, which they are, we'll see the four, the five defensive backs. Now, they want to run because they only have six in this thing. If they use four defensive backs, then, then they wanted to be able to pass the ball. And now the Redskins go with four wide receivers. Second down, Williams retreats. Out of the pressure. Again, a flag on the play. Back close to the line of scrimmage. Weimer knocked Monk out of bounds, but the flag is back in the holding area. That's funny. The Redskins pass uh, all that in the first half. They have no holding penalties. Nothing. Now they come back to the second half, and that's their second holding penalty, of course, on this drive. Holding. Offense number 63. 10-yard penalty. Repeat the down, second down. Raleigh McKenzie, number 63. 
That was one of those where it was away from the action. He was really backside of that pass. That'll make it second and 28. Redskins out in a hurry. You don't get much help from any sideline in a situation like this. Sanders on the move. William, screen pass to Griffin. Griffin breaks one. And then is bowled over by Ricky Jackson after a gain of five. Antonio Gibson was the second man there. This is the first completion to a running back here, the screen pass. But again, the, the Saints play this stuff well. I mean, watch how they read the screen, how they surround the ball. You try and form a triangle on it. You want to get a guy outside, a guy inside, and a guy coming right up the middle. The defense always tries to form a defensive triangle against a screen pass. That was a perfect example of one. Third and 23. Swilling in the game now, lined up as a defensive end. Williams going for the ball. He has our punt. Again, a ball underthrown that Monk came back for and made a great adjustment. A gain of 46, a first down in their deep in St. Territory. That's what you like about Art Monk. You know, he's a big wide receiver. That's Toy Cook, number 41 on him. Art Monk is like 210 pounds. He's not as quick as the other wide receivers. Cook, you see, is playing zone, but watch, by the time he gets over there, Monk is so big that he could just give him that shoulder, and Cook just bounced off. Now, when Cook bounces off, that gives a separation that Monk needs to catch the ball. So it's first and 10 Redskins at the St. 22. Art Monk has caught two for 55 yards, first and 10. We're tied at 14. Next Saturday, CBS Sports presents college football. It's another top 20 matchup of Southeastern Conference teams vying for a Sugar Bowl bid. Ninth ranked Auburn against 19th ranked Georgia. Bulldogs have a strong running game behind Tim Worley. Who's over 1,100 yards rushing through nine games, and the Tigers, in the meanwhile, strike through the air. Reggie Slack guiding the attack. That's next week here on CBS. Georgia and Auburn. First and ten here at RFK Stadium. Timmy Smith back at the running back spot and running right now. And hit down by Vaughn Johnson as he picks up a couple. Redskins at the Saint 20. That's really the strength of this this Saint defense of those linebackers Ricky Jackson on one side Sam Mills and Vaughn Johnson there in the middle. They really along with Tony Elliott as a nose tackle. They really hold up that middle and then of course Pat Swilling coming from the back side when he's healthy. He's playing now but he's not healthy really. Second and eight. Doug Williams back to throw it, flag on the play, pass complete to Gary Clark. Milton Mack on the coverage, but a penalty marker down early. Gain of four. Saints indicating, the Saint players indicating that it's against Washington. Of course, they always do that. Never us, always them. Penalty was on number 81, Art Munt. But watch Pat Swilling here. He's really not going as much as he can. I mean, he's not healthy. But watch Jim Lachey and the shot that he puts on him. I mean, there's a big 290-pound guy, and even if you didn't have an abdominal strain, you're not going to get by him today as a left tackle. Second down. Man. That's Ricky Sanders on the move. Here's the blitz. Williams gets rid of it, and the pass is almost caught by Clark. Williams just barely got rid of it. Under pressure from Brett Maxey. Rarely do you see.
see the Saints do this. They don't blitz very much. Well, I think they, they figure right here from the bottom of the screen, 39, Maxie, that, that, that they have to knock him out of field goal position. They want to come up with a big defensive play. One thing about Doug Williams, he's not a mobile guy, but he has the ability, just like Bobby Abier, to get rid of the ball quickly. He doesn't take a lot of sacks. And he's a great big guy. I mean, 6'4", 220 at least. That's the other part, his strength and then his quick release. You're not going to get him very often. Now is Monk in motion again. Doug Williams, collision, no flag. No flag. Gary Clark got tangled up with Dave Weimer, but the official on top of it, looking, no flag. And here comes Chip Blowmiller. Dave Weimer's eyes look like he's saying, boy, am I glad we tripped up on that one. I don't need any more of this. He's been the starting left corner. He was really beaten out by Reggie Sutton, and then Milton Mack started there today. Then when Van Jakes went down in the in the first half, he's playing right corner today. Here is Low Miller then, from 43 yards away with Greg Coleman over. Yes, sir. He is no longer the victim of a slump that plagued him earlier in the year. And the Redskins lead by three. Today's small cars are tougher than ever on oil. Their high compression engines not only rev high, they can run hotter than regular small car engines. Their searing heat can begin to... Killer, a desperate manhunt. Richard Crenna, Kate Capshaw, Internal Affairs, tonight on CBS. Washington 17, the Saints 14. Low Miller's kickoff is high. Jamel Gray at the goal line. Gray is out of the pack and still going outside the 30. Good return. Stopped finally by Keith Griffin. Next week, it, of course, begins at 12.30 Eastern time with the NFL today. Then the Bears are here against the Redskins, where we'll be. The Eagles against the Steelers. Tampa Bay, Detroit. The Giants at Phoenix later. And the Saints against the Rams. And that's a big one. Redskins by three with 8.48 left the third quarter. First and ten. Saints have it their own 32. Redskins showing blitz and here they come. And they smother Reuben Mays at the line of scrimmage. No game. Marcus Cook, Dave Butts. Here's what the Saints did in their first half. They were nine for 15 to the wide receivers, two for two to the running backs. And then you'll see that they didn't throw it all to the tight end. So, again, both of these teams have been throwing to their wide receivers, stretching out, but not a lot of deep passes, a controlled passing game. Both been very successful at it in the first half. Bobby Bear, the Saint quarterback from Cutoff, Louisiana. Second and 12. Jordan goes in motion, and Bear goes back to throw and throws quickly and half. Eric Martin. Stopped by Barry Wilburn Bear. Again, gets rid of the ball so quickly. I think that, that has to be a great throw. I mean, you just can't sack that guy. He's getting good pressure. He's throwing while he's running back. There's Barry Wilburn. He's running stride for stride with Eric Martin, but the ball is just let enough thrown right over his head that he can make that catch. And Wilburn is lucky there at the end of that play. He didn't get a penalty. Because that's one thing these officials watch very closely is that club into the head. First down, Saints. Haybear on first down again gets it to Martin. And he almost had enough to get going. Lost the ball, but I think they're going to say he was down. Gain of 16. Todd Bowles. That was an interesting play. Wilburn again was up there in rotation. He fell down. 
and Eric Martin was able to come to the inside. But watch Wilburn again go in there, finishing off the play. The referee blew the whistle before he got there. So now you're going to say he blew the whistle, then it should be a late hit. But he just stuck his helmet in there and knocked it out of there. Martin, six carries, uh, six catches, rather, for 97 yards and one touchdown. First and 10 Saints at the Redskin 25. Clark stands the wide left. Mays is the deep back. Amir quickly gets it outside of Robert Clark. He's down to about the 14 yard line. Pickup of 12, stopped by Darrell Green. And again, I think here you can see the, the frustration in Dexter Manley in this defensive line because you can rush, you can beat your man, you can get close, but Bobby Abair gets back there so quickly, and once he gets back there, he gets rid of the ball so quickly that they can't get there no matter what they do. Even if no one blocked, you almost couldn't get there, could you? That's one thing that, that when you have offensive line problems like the Saints are having, you thank goodness that you got a quarterback like Bobby Abair. 14 out of 20 he is. Again, up the middle. Todd Bowles almost intercepted it. Here comes a late flag. I think that may be a, a flag out of frustration that I was talking about earlier. And you could see, you could see the way Dexter Manley was playing. You could see the way Wilburn was playing, that, that they were coming awfully close to getting a penalty call. defense grasping the face mask first down penalize half the distance to the goal line against the Redskins one thing about this crew they don't always say who the penalty is on they just say offense or defense I guess if you're the guy you're happy to hear that or not hear it and that'll make it first and goal from the six for the Saints Deep back behind Abair, who now is saying, I can't hear. Neither can the center. Help me out, folks. Again, remember, if they go to shotgun, that's what the center does the cage. But here, up in line, Abair will do the cage. There's the goal from a six. Now, this place is rocking. Clark went in motion, and a lot of people jumped. This is going to be against the Saints. False start. Offense, 82. Penalty decline. False start. Offense, number 77. Five-yard penalty. Repeat the down. First down. Well, what he's saying, it's both the right tackle and the tight end. You see, Tice moves forward. He's the tight end. Gilbert moves backward. And then he gets knocked backward some more after he moves. So on a play before, they don't tell us who the defensive penalty was on. Then they get the offense, and they give us two of the names. But, you know, Dexter Manley was over on the left defensive side on Gilbert that time. He's been moving right and left. I think they all want to line up against this Gilbert guy because he's the third right tackle the Saints have used. The Saints go with uh, Jordan. One of their running backs split wide to the left this time. And Clark comes in motion. Hebert to Mays. And Mays struggles down. And I'm not sure what happened. I see the Saints celebrating. Well, Buford Jordan ended up with the ball. I think it was a fumble, and then Jordan ends up with the ball that popped up. He picks it up and runs it into the end zone. I didn't know if it was a lateral or the ball just popped loose or what, but let's take a look. May starts off with it from Hebert. Well, Jordan, you remember, was, was lined up as a wide receiver. 
We see the fumble there. Look, it bounces out to his left. There's Jordan there. He just picks it up and runs it in. He was hit by, Mays was hit by Todd Bowles. Knocked the ball loose. And Jordan picked it up. And Morton Anderson adds the extra point in the Saints lead 21-17. Mysterious touchdown. The Saints 21, Washington 17, 5 17 left third quarter. Buford Jordan picked up Reuben May's fumble and took it in. Wilbur Marshall. Hands being retaped. Jamie Morris in the meantime back to accept Morton Anderson's kickoff, and this guy is good. Nine yards deep in the end zone. Someone said we'll see how good Morton Anderson is on natural turf, not in the Superdome. He's good, no matter where. And Jim Morris said, tell whoever asked that question not to worry about Morton Anderson. He can kick anywhere. You know, it's interesting. When a team plays against Morton Anderson, the, the, the opposite coach and players always talk about Morton Anderson, what a great kicker he is. Any other team, no one ever mentions the other team's kicker. Except to say that he's uh, mentally unbalanced or something like that. Yeah, but that's their own kicker. Those complain about their own guy. They never mention the other team's guy, except if you're playing against Morton Anderson. Here's Williams back to throw it and going for the gun. Complete. Gary Clark, the intended receiver, and Jake's the coverer. To Brent Musburger in New York now for an update. Well, Pat Young continues to perform his magic, what he does best, that little escapability, as it's always been called, and he finally finds Jones in the end zone, and now it's 23-0 Niners over Phoenix. Back to Pat. You know, John, those uh, 49ers could be uh, starting to get settled a little bit and they might be tough down the stretch yeah, and if they do and I think the same thing is true of the Giants you know and Bill Parcell said that if they keep letting us win they better watch out we may become pretty good I think both of those teams roll out left. on second down Williams gives to Keith Griffin on what looked like a watched up draw play unpopular call with the fans here at RFK stopped by Gethers jumping As you look at the, the drives that the Redskins had, 18, 12, and 9 plays for 80, 75, and 60, this first half or the first three quarters of this game has really been a ball control, an effective ball control by both offenses. Third and 10 now, Williams retreats. Gets away for the rush. Pass is picked off by Gene. The Saints gets it down inside the 10 to about the Redskin 5. 44 yard return by Atkins. Gene Atkins is a guy that comes in in their nickel package, six defensive backs. He's a safety man. Watch him, he's at the top right hand part of the screen. Just sitting back there, he's not covering man to man. He's just sitting there watching the quarterback and reacting to the throw. I tell you, that's what this Saint team does so well. They bend, they bend, they never break. They make you force things. And then when you force things, they bring them right back at you. you There's see, where he is sitting. He's just sitting right there. He's reading both Williams and now the ball. The ball is overthrown. And there he is for the interception. First and goal for the eighth. That's the Redskins' first turnover today. But season-wise, season long. That's the thing that's killed him. Tice comes in motion to hand off Mays. Mays down to about the three. Todd Bowles and Olkowitz made the stop, but Mays got six big ones. And you can see Mays is going to hold on to it down here. Last time he fumbled it, Buford Jordan recovered it for the touchdown. 
Now, had that happened in the last two minutes or on fourth down, that wouldn't have been a touchdown. Because the only guy that could recover for a gain is the guy who fumbled it. But the fact that it wasn't in the last two minutes or a fourth down, Buford George could recover for a touchdown. Second and goal from the three. Mays, the drawing back. Tice again in motion. Mays, the carry. Nothing to it. Shut down by Marcus Cook. A loss of one, maybe. Olkowitz with the assist. You know, an interesting thing here, the Saints are one of those teams that will go to four wide receivers, even down in this position. We see Mays here. He has no cutback, no place to bounce out, so he just has to leave it there. Now, most teams here stay with two tight ends, three tight ends. The Saints are one of the few teams they get down inside the five-yard line and spread the field out like this. Watch this. Third and goal from the four. Four wide receivers. Marshall jumped into the Saint backfield. And that'll move it closer. Well, we saw that one all the way. The way they figured, it's just half the distance. Defense, number 58, penalized half the distance to the goal line. Still third down. What Marshall was trying to do was he was trying to hit that cadence, get the snap count where he could hit it just as the ball was snapped. Of course, he hit it prematurely. Richie Pettibone, the Redskin defensive coordinator, thinks now that with that offside and that penalty, that the Saints are going to run it, so he changed his substitution pattern. And then the Saints took out their four wide receivers. They also changed. See, so now they're in a run formation. And Ruben Mays is behind Bobby Hebert. Hebert end zone. No flag. No penalty. Hobie Brenner was the intended receiver. And we'll see the field goal team. I think one thing that, that that penalty probably became an advantage to the Redskins because it put the the Saints too close where they couldn't use their four wide receivers, made them go to a regular formation, and now you'll see you just run out of room. That was Monty Coleman there on Hobie Brenner, and it looked like there could have been some contact before the ball was there. So Anderson from 19 yards away and this is pretty automatic twenty four seventeen the Saints lead the Redskins with two thirteen left third quarter a reminder on Tuesday make your voice heard vote then watch Dan Rather and CBS News for full coverage. But vote. Anderson's kickoff this time is high. And tomorrow is at four. Cut quickly after a return of 17. Hey, that is... There's something the way you're going to see Greg Scales come in there. Watch 83 come in there, and he just cut Morris down. I don't even know that Morris saw him coming. Another one of those little things that the Saints do so well. You know, Scales is a big guy. I mean, he's yeah. like 6'3", 253. He's a rookie, a third-string tight end, but he was flying on that kickoff cover. Smith gets the ball. Smith struggles for about three. Pat Swilling made the stop. Yeah, we were talking about the ball control passing game of the Redskins. Watch it. To the deep side, they've thrown two for three left, two for four middle deep, and they have thrown none to the right deep. But you're going to see most of the passes. Look, the left under 15, four for five, three for five, again to the left, none to the right, and three for three to the extreme right. So most of their passes have been in the middle and to the left, and most of them less than 15 yards. Williams. Pass all 
almost picked off by Ricky Jackson. He juggled it intended for Gary Clark. Jackson almost had it. One thing I'll tell you about fans, they don't have real good memories. It was just in uh, January when Doug Williams was leading him to a Super Bowl victory, and he throws an interception, almost throws another one, and they pull out those boos. Williams, 14 out of 21. The Saints with a wonderful record on the road. In fact, they're trying to tie the all-time NFL record for victories on the road. Sanders goes in motion, and Williams goes back to throw. Has some time. Again, almost picked off this time by Jackson. That's two of them. Mark Rippon. Who did so well when Williams was hurt. Schrader was traded. Two very, very near interceptions by Doug Williams. Saw Ricky Jackson over there. He wasn't he wasn't really feeling good about himself knocking those balls down. He wanted the interceptions. No flag. Greg Coleman is down. The punter for the Redskins, but no penalty marker down. 35-yard kick. No penalty marker. I think what they're saying, Pat, is that Dennis Woodbury, number 48, watch him here. He blocks the guy into Coleman. Watch 48. You see the hit there, the block? Yep. What they're saying is that he didn't run into the kicker that he was blocked by the Redskin blocker into the Redskin kicker. Talk about tough times. The Redskins with their punters have really had a tough time this year with punters getting hurt. He's saying, hey, he knocked me in there. Well, he knew it, and the official saw that, but that doesn't make Greg Coleman feel any better. They started off the Redskins did with Steve Cox. Look at this. Four punter Barnard. Just about ready to come back. Now Greg Coleman is punting and he's hurt. Four punters they've been through. Two long snappers, two holders, five punt returners, and four kick returners. Hey, you remember that uh, their last game last week against the Houston Oilers, Derek Shepard, who was their punt returner, really took a shot. And he had a neck injury, and they thought maybe he could play. They had further x-rays. The doctor didn't like what he saw and decided that he would have to sit out this game. Greg Coleman, who punted for the Minnesota Vikings, brother of Vince Coleman of the St. Louis Cardinals. If you look at some of the other scores, Falcons' first shutout since 1982. Tough times for the Detroit Lions. Bears with Vince Tobin in command. Beat Tampa Bay with Mr. Tobin replacing Mike Ditka. Nighttime in Washington. And what a what a magnificent sight. Hey, I think these people in Washington would think that the site is much more magnificent if their Redskins weren't down 24 to 17. Well, the Eagles have already won to improve their record to five and five. And if the Redskins lose this one, they'd be five and five and the Giants seven and three. That has to be the one they're looking at, the Giants, because the Giants have beaten them twice. So really they have an extra game lead on them. Bear chase and out of the pocket. And Tennis for Clark. Defended by Daryl Green. Daryl's been nicked a little bit, as they say. He's got a bad knee. Had a bad knee, and it still aggravates him, bothers him. You can see he's he's going man to man here. He has real good coverage. He dives in front for the interception. And I think he just falls on his stomach and then rolls over the ball. So that could have been that could have been just getting hit. But watch the shot that Wilbur Marshall puts on Bobby Abair. Hey, and that's an incomplete pass. Look at all those bodies flying around. What you pay? Here's Ruben May. May. 
five yard pickup for Wilbur Marshall on the tackle. And it'll bring up a third down. Here is Greg Coleman, who seems to be okay now. Manuski next to him, number 91, just activated this week. See Anthony Allen there, number 89. He's the punt returner. And most of the time, punt returners have a ball in their hand. They're always throwing it up and down, always getting used to handling that ball because that's such a big, big play. Three wide receivers for the Saints on the left side this time. A bear out of the shotgun. Quick to Martin. First down, Saints. Alvin Walton and Clarence Vaughn on the stop, but enough for a Saint first down, a gain of nine. That's the end of the third quarter with the score. The Saints 24, the Redskins 17. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Pontiac. We build excitement. City Court, because Americans want to succeed, not just survive. And by Blue Diamond Growers, a can of wheat. That's all we ask. RFK Stadium in Washington. Pat Summerall, John Madden, the Saints and the Redskins. New Orleans leading 24-17. We start the fourth quarter. It's first and ten Saints. Back to May. Outside is Mays and away from some people. Individual effort by Reuben Mays and at the end of it, a penalty marker down, a gain of eight. Jim Dombrowski, the left tackle, got a good block on the line of scrimmage, and that was the play that got Reuben Mays through the Unnecessary line. Unnecessary roughness. Defense, number 40, hit out of bounds late, 15 yards, first down. And Alvin Walt was the guy that the penalties called on. Watch number 72. He makes a block right there that knocks, knocks the hole, makes the hole, so that Reuben Mays can do this. A good stiff arm on Todd Bowles. Now he's out of bounds, and then Walton gets him. So the Saints move it down to the Redskin 23. The only ball carrier, other than the fumble recovery by Buford Jordan, the only ball carrier for the Saints today has been Reuben Mays. Here's Abair. He gets it down to Martin is inside the 10 jumped away from Barry Wilburn and some other Redskins and gets it first and goal for the Saints look like Eric Martin hurt himself on that play Pat because he's taken himself out but what a game he has played I think if they have an MVP it has to be Bobby Abear and Eric Martin I mean they have connected on everything and then Martin is one of those guys who will pick up the tough ones and make the run he's a lot like Gary Clark you know, a guy that will go inside and outside with the same enthusiasm. First and goal from the nine. I'm not sure what's happened to Lonzel Hill. Martin's out, and so is Hill. So they go a paradox. Here's Mays behind the line of scrimmage, almost. And finally, yes, Dexter Manley. Slowed him down, and Marcus Cook finally made the stop. That was a fouled up play because it looked like Reuben Mays was expecting a handoff and he got a pitch. He wasn't waiting for the pitch. He wasn't expecting the pitch. Now either Bobby Abair was wrong and should have handed it off or Reuben Mays was wrong and should have been looking for a pitch. But that could have been a fumble as well as just a lost play. Now Lonzel Hill is back in for New Orleans. But he's limping a little bit. He's in the slot left inside Perriman. Mays on a draw play, stopped by Butts. They lost four. Lost four. His Redskin defense is getting fired up now. And again, I think they have to. I think they not only have to 
stop him here on this next down as they did on the last two, but maybe on this play, third down, maybe knock him out of field goal. Maybe try something that's a little drastic to knock him out of field goal because they're down seven. They can tie with a touchdown. If the Saints get a score here, then they're going to have to have two touchdowns and two scores. Third and goal, and they're back at the 20 after that last loss. Redskins showing blitz, and here they come in Bear. Over the head of Clark. No chance. Now a flag on the play, and that appears to be against New Orleans, and that may well take them out of that field goal range. Well, that's what they were trying to get them out of, if that's the way. That's a big penalty call against the Saints because Morton Anderson from that distance would be automatic. I think it was something that happened after. against Dexter Manley after the play. You know, Dexter's one of those guys who does a lot of talking, and sometimes he'll incite the guy into making a penalty against him after a play. Errol Green up talk, talking to the officials. Do they decline this if it happened after the play? Let's see. Personal foul. Offense number 72. Dombrowski. Because after the play was over, it will be fourth down. So they lose the down and the yardage. Of course, they had picked up 15 yards on a personal foul penalty against Walton. Now they get it back. That's going to make a 52-yard field goal kick here for Morton Anderson. But they you, 15 yards up was well within its distance. This is going to be stretching it here. What you don't want here if you're a New Orleans Saint is for this thing to be blocked. It's partially blocked. And the Redskins down it at the five. Marty Coleman got a hand on it. things to talk about about this one which we will do when we come back we're not it is first away. and ten Washington the ball will be placed at the five and a half yard line. It was a missed field goal. However, the ball was recovered in the field of play by the receivers. It is their ball at the spot of the recovery. Well, they're almost better, better off not to block that. It would have gone back to the original line of scrimmage. Now they have it at their own five. To summarize the game, if that's possible, John, that's what happened. Eric Martin, eight receptions for 120 yards, one touchdown. Bobby A. Bears, 16 out of 26, two touchdown passes. And that's the situation right now. The Saints, 24, the Redskins, 17. They have the ball at their own five yard line. You'd always like to block a kick, but maybe they shouldn't have blocked that one. Well, I think I think they had to go and try him. And the thing is, when it hit Monty Coleman, it continued to go forward. So then when they recovered it, the ball is there. But I still think that was a big drive by the Redskin defense and the special teams there because now they're still within seven points. Here's Williams from his own five-yard line. That's the line of scrimmage. Out to Monk. Milton Mack is the man who made the stop. I think the Redskin defense really rose to the occasion there. I mean, you could just see him pick it up and notch it too, and then it carried over into that field goal. They got a bad break, maybe by blocking it. But at least they held them off there when they had to. Second and three. The Redskins at their own 12. Doug Williams, the quarterback. Hands off, Kenny Smith. picked up four that should be enough for a first down before he stopped by Sam Mills yeah they're going to look back at that series and the poor guy that's going to get blamed is the offensive tackle Dombrowski 
Uh, Dombrowski was the guy who got the penalty after the down and put him back where Morton Anderson had to kick a lower ball to get it longer so that it could be blocked. Redskin first down. 10.55 left to play. Saints by a touchdown. William fires Ricky Sanders. He could go a long way. Gene Atkins finally knocked him out of bounds. Sanders gets into St. Territory. Picked up 42 yards. And these Redskins do have three starting wide receivers. This guy, Ricky Sanders, is one of them. You talk about an explosive guy. Watch him explode there. Then he's going to get a block right there from Art Monk. Monk is the guy that gave him the block that let him gain about another 10 yards. That's the thing that makes big plays out of average plays. Explosive guys when they catch it, and other wide receivers down in front making a block. And that's one thing about all three of these Redskins receivers, Park, Sanders, and Monk. They don't mind blocking. Well, tough guy. First down, Redskins. Williams gets to Smith. Smith inside the St. 35. A gain of nine. Stopped finally by Brett Maxey. I think what we're seeing here is one team who's a very good team, the New Orleans Saints. Another team, the defending champion Redskins, fighting for their lives. And it's boiling down to this fourth quarter. And I get the feeling now that right now both sides are letting everything hang out. Ten minutes, ten seconds left to play, and the Saints up by a touchdown, 24-17. Williams outside, Cooper and Park, he shakes one tackle, he shakes another, and gets to the ten. Brett Maxey finally took him down after a gain of 23. Hey, one thing, the, the best part of this Redskin offense now are these wide receivers. Doug Williams is using them well. Goes to Sanders, he gets a big play, goes to the other side. Clark, these guys have said before, they not only know how to get open, they not only know how to catch a ball, but they know how to run with it after they catch it. Just outside the 10, they can make a first down without scoring. So it's first and 10 from about the 10 and a half. Williams to Jamie Morris. Jamie Morris to about the eight. Stopped by Swilling. Now what Joe Gibbs is thinking in here, you say, why a Jamie Morris? I think he's figuring that this defense should be worn down a little. His team is bigger and stronger. He's trying to get the fresh guy in there, Morris, maybe, maybe be a little quicker than the defense is. Kelvin Bryant injured early in the game was taken to the locker room for x-rays for a pinched nerve in his neck he has not returned it's been smith who is in there now and keith griffin and jamie morris now it's griffin Williams. a touchdown to ricky sanders a wrestling match at the goal line, but Sanders got in. You see Sanders here, he started in motion, started back, came back again. Milton Mack is there, they're gonna collide there. Mack has him here, he tries to pull him back but the ball has broken the plane of the goal line. When he did pull it back, it was after the ball was over. Now again, right there, it's not a touch, right there, it's a touchdown. That ball is over the plane. Now, you can pull him back, you can do anything you want, but it's six points. Sanders, five catches, and just that touchdown. As John Madden said, just Get that ball into the end zone, and we have a tie game as Low Miller hits. 8.25 remaining in the fourth quarter, and the Redskins and the Saints are tied at 24 all. Blue Diamond Almond. 
We're tied at RFK Stadium. The Redskins kicking off to Mel Gray and the New Orleans Saints. Gray is hit down inside the 20. Fumble and a scramble. And the Saints get it back. Atkins made the recovery, and the Saints were very, very fortunate. Gene Atkins has that ball, number 28 for the Saints. He's not going to give it up. I'll tell you, this is a fired up Redskin group. They had 11 guys running down on that kickoff like they were all shot out of a cannon. 24-24 tie at RFK Stadium in Washington. Pat Summerall, John Madden, 8-11 left to play in the contest. Very important game for both people. Look at Dexter Manley down there, Pat. He was firing up the crowd. He wants them to yell. He doesn't want Bobby Hebert to be able to, 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 for his team to be able to hear his starting count. Ruben Mays, the deep back, gets the carry. And Mays taken down at about the four by Olkowitz. Loss of three. As I said earlier, that this Redskin team knew when they were down by seven, that defense was down there before that they were putting their whole season right here in the line. And I still think they have that feeling. Look at Dexter and say, come on, help us out. Give us that 12th man. You make enough noise, you'll be a 13th man. Second and 13, the ball's all the way back at the five. They bear out of the end zone, complete. The Buford Jordan, Jordan has got a first down and out to the 30. Big, big play. Barry Wilburn finally made the stop. How in the heck Bobby Bear threw that ball? Watch it, there's going to be three guys on him. Watch Bear. he gets back. How he finds Jordan out there, I have no idea. Watch him, how he got rid of that ball with all those white jerseys coming on him, and he just sipped it in there. A competitor who knows how to smile. I think he's smiling at those fans that were that were trying to follow up his cadence. First down, Saints at their own 29. Abair makes the main into the pocket and down he goes. Monty Coleman came from wherever to take down Bobby Abair. Hey, this is what football's all about. I mean, this is, is guys going everyone, giving everything they got, guys cracking the emotion, the fans, the night, the dirt, the grass, linebackers, big old arms, you know, mud on the thing, stuff hanging out, fourth quarter, tired sweat. This is what it's all about. And a tie score. Well, you can't beat that. Overtime, if they play like this, we ought to let them play a long, long time. 6-15, 6-10 now left to play in regulation time. And we're headed in that overtime direction. Bear. second down, 16. Redskins are after him. Pass knocked away, intended for Eric Martin. Bear again under heavy pressure. He didn't have any time as Wilbur Marshall and Dexter Manley were right in his face. You know, one thing that I'll tell you is unfair. The, the Saints have been knocked for being a conservative team. I sure don't see that. I see them being tied. I see them going, trying to win. I see a, a, a competitor, a quarterback, will fight you every way you can. I see a coach who is in on every play. And how you can call this conservative, I have no idea. Perriman and Lonzel Hill come to the left. Clark and Martin are split wide to the right. Bear came up and gave the snap count to the center. And here they come out of the shotgun, and Bear goes quickly to Clark off his fingers and out of bounds and incomplete. Clarence Vaughn right with him, and the Saints will have to punt. Clarence Vaughn had good position on him. You see, he was underneath him, and he made Air Bear, A Bear have to throw the ball up over him. Hanson to punt, and he will punt to Daryl Green, who's back to return it. Up 
Daryl Green, anytime they need a big play, they put him back as a punt returner, the fastest man in the NFL. Remember the Bear game at Soldier Field last. Oh, what a good punt by Hanson. This one's going to hang up there a long time and chase Daryl Green back to his own 24-yard line. And now he has no place to go. 4-9 on that punt. 52 yards by Hanson when they needed it most. Colbrand down to stop Daryl Green. He had no chance. Twenty-four, twenty-four. Saints, Redskins. With five forty left to play at RFK Stadium in Washington. Both teams almost have to win. Based on what happened today, the Saints could recapture sole possession of first place in the NFC West, and the Redskins have to win to stay close to the Giants. Doug with it. Pumps goes. He got it. Donnie Warren down the middle, and Warren hammers inside the Saints 40 to about the 38. Brett Maxey and Ricky Jackson brought him down. Donnie Warren doesn't catch many, but when he does, it hurts. Well, you know what happens? Those outside receivers, Art Monk, Gary Clark, Ricky Sanders, are so explosive. And you see what Doug Williams did? He pumped faked out there to his left to let that zone widen out. Now, when that zone widens out to the outside, that opens the middle wider for Donnie Warren. Very, very valuable member of this Redskin offensive unit, Donnie Warren, number 85. Doesn't catch many. Here is Tim Smith. Smith hammers to about the 30. Stopped finally by Brett Maxey. Gain of seven. What the Redskins are probably thinking now is to slow it down. That we have to score tight. We want to score, but we don't want to score too quickly. I would bet that they would want to take all their time, take all the time off the clock they can. Probably keep the ball on the ground, but still have to get first down. Doug Williams, 19 out of 27. has done a great job of reading that Saint defense. When they cover his three key guys, he goes to Donnie Warren, Timmy Smith. Well, you know, the thing that the Redskins fans have to figure out, I think, with Doug Williams, is that he is a little of a streak passer, too. That he'll go on a real hot streak and he'll complete a lot. He'll throw a few incompletions, maybe have an interception, but you can't get down on him then because he is capable of another streak. Seven yards stopped by Vaughn Johnson. And the clock continues to tick down. Three minutes, ten seconds remaining. And you can see that by staying on the field, keeping the offense on the field, you can wear down that defense. The other thing you can do, of course, is keep that explosive Saint offense off the field. And then when they do get the ball, they have to score, but you're giving them less time. Second and three, Bobby A. Bear, St. Quarterback. Hard Monk goes split wide to the left. You can just see his speed a moment ago at the top of your picture. Step plastic to center. This is Smith. Keep it. Keep it there. Don't fumble it. Two or three. Sam Mills made the stop, but keep it. Safely keep it. And let it happen for Ch Chip Low Miller, who is loosening on the sideline and see what they can do now as Doug Williams is walking over to the sideline they can run let the clock run down to the two minute warning right, right here there is Low Miller and again Greg Coleman is the holder and he's supposed to be one of the best I think what happened I think the Saints must have taken time out 
timeout. New Orleans, their first timeout. This is a 40-second timeout. Well, you're right. The Saints took a timeout. They have two left. Time on the clock, two minutes, five seconds. See, again, what they're thinking, the Jim Morris thinking ahead now, taking a timeout. Not that they're going to stop the Redskins here, but they're trying to buy time now for when they get the ball. Joe Gibbs, the head coach, the very, very successful and nice guy, head coach of the Washington Redskins. Next Sunday on CBS, the Bears will be here. So will we. Philadelphia goes to Pittsburgh. Tampa Bay visits Detroit. That's at 1230 Eastern time. That's the NFL today. That's at 1230. And then the Giants go to Phoenix. Those are the late games here on CBS. It's third and one. Redskin ball at the Saints 16 with just over two minutes remaining. Smith is the runner. And he gets the tackle. And he gets the Redskin first down. Sam Mills made the stop. He picked up three. The Redskins move closer. A minute and 59. Actually, the two-minute warning. And the Redskins are there. Jim Mora, coach of the Saints, looking at his team along with Joe Gibbs of the Redskins, tied at 24 apiece with a minute 59 remaining. Since Calvin Bryant went down early in the game, Timmy Smith has come in. Of course, you remember he had such a marvelous Super Bowl game, but he's come in and carried 23 times for 68 yards. And now he's the long setback. First and 10, Redskins at the St. 13. William Smith left side. Two or three. Timeout, Saints. They have one left. A minute 52 left on the clock. Score tied at 24 all. -24. 24 24. Pat Summerall, John Madden, the timeout situation at RFK between the Saints and the Redskins. Washington has two left. The Saints have only one timeout remaining. Second and eight. Ball, second down at the St. 11. Ricky Sanders in motion. Doug Williams gives to Jimmy Smith, and he has tripped up after a gain of one by Sam Mills right at the 10. They have got their kicker, Chip Lowmiller, right in front of the uprights at the moment. The Redskins do. Saints take their last timeout, none remaining. So what they're doing now is they're taking their time out, realizing that if they stop them on this down, then then the Redskins will have to kick the field goal. Then the clock will stop again for the kickoff and all that stuff. So they're going to get the ball back more time, but no timeout. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Washington Redskins and the National Football League is prohibited. Chip Low Miller in the hot seat right now. I'm talking to him at practice yesterday. He's got a cyst on the top of his kicking foot right where he hits the ball. It's about the size of a golf ball, which he said he irritated last year when he was in college. And Iowa, when it was very cold and the ball was, the ball was like kicking a brick. I guess after the season he's going to have surgery yeah. on that, but he has to get through this year the way it is. Minutes 25 remaining, and Williams gives on a reverse to Monk, and he might get in. He doesn't get in. Stop that the five. A gain of five, and now. Maxi made the stop on Art Monk. I would think if I were the Redskins now, I would take the full time and take the penalty. Let it run off because 
what's five yards? If he's going to make it from there, he's going to make it from five yards deeper. So you may as well let the entire 30-second clock run off. There's 20 seconds left on it now. Let it run all the way down to zero. Not try and get it off quickly right at the end, but just let it run down. And that's what the Redskins are doing. Because the Saints, again, they can't do anything about it. Well, they've got Low Miller and the field goal kicking unit on the left hash mark. And I would think uh, for a soccer style kicker as he is, I'd rather be there because you'd be less inclined to hook it. You know, and I know that the Saints are going to have a block on. Timeout. Last week, Washington they had success against the Rams, out. and they blocked a field goal from their left side. 50 seconds remaining. Well, and I, the Redskins take this timeout, John. I guess Joe Gibbs didn't want to take the five-yard penalty. I would have figured, what the heck, I would uh, just go five yards back. But maybe that's something you talk to your kicker about. There's not much in a situation like this that you can talk to your kicker about. I think everyone just stays away from him, don't they? I remember George Bland used to say when he has to kick a thing like this, just everyone stay. He didn't want anyone to talk to him. No coaches talking to him, no players talking to him, no officials talking to him, no one. But George was a 15-year veteran. This guy's a rookie. Well, I remember that no matter what they asked me, I didn't have an answer. A lot of nodding. Yes, sir. From 23 yards away, Low Miller is good. And it's now the Redskins 27. The Saints 24. 47 seconds remain. Washington, where the Redskins have just taken the lead. And to those of you who have just joined us, expecting 60 minutes, welcome to CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League. I'm Pat Summerall, along with John Madden. We're in Washington, D.C. The score is 27-24 Redskins. Time remaining 47 seconds, and there's just what happened. 60 minutes will follow it conclusion of the game. <laughs> Those coaches there in the sideline, whatever has happened, they're going to give it as much help as they can with the body English. But you see Low Miller, the first guy he went up and congratulated was a fellow rookie, Dave Harbour, who snapped for that uh, field goal. Low Miller's kickoff is fielded Dave Waymer. And he's out of the pack and knocked down at about the 42-yard line by Terry Orr. 40 seconds remain. 29-yard return. Washington has one timeout remaining. The Saints have none. But remember, keep in mind that the Saints have perhaps the best field goal kicker there is. Whether they can get him in action or not remains to be seen. Well, they'll go to the shotgun. They'll go to four wide receivers. They hope they can get the snap off. They hope they can hear. And again, all Bear needs is a couple completions here. And he's in Morton Anderson's range. Redskins are going to rush three. It looks like. And that's all they rush. Bear at the middle, Eric Martin. And Martin's still on his feet. Down at the 40-yard line. Stopped by Walt finally. A pickup of 23 in a hurry. That's one of those receptions. He only needs one more. Hebert goes quickly. Hebert throws incomplete. A flag on the play. Penalty mound. Penalty marker down. Tended for Clark. But the penalty marker's down further downfield than that. Well, it's in the area where it's going to be against a defense. Either pass interference or a defensive holding. Holding. Defense number 45. First down. 
First down, Saints. Jim Mora looks like he's ready to go to the senior prom. He doesn't look excited, does he? And there's Anderson right there. Right now, if they don't make any other yardage, it would be a 52-yard field goal for Martin Anderson. 18 seconds on the scoreboard clock. Keep in mind, again, no timeouts left for New Orleans. And the Saints can't afford a sack here. Bear shotgun gets the snap, gets some time, and gets it to Eric Martin and gets it out of bounds at about the 32. Clarence Vaughn knocked Martin out of bounds along with Daryl Green. Four yard pickup out of bounds, stops the clock, 14 seconds left. Now, the way you figure this is you always add 17 yards to the down, so it's on the 32 yard line. So he had 17. That's a 49 yard field goal for Morton Anderson. As a holder is seven yards back from the line of scrimmage, and of course the goal post is 10 yards from the goal line. So you try one more play, maybe. I would think so, but, but you better get rid of it. You better not have an interception. You better not get sacked. A bear quickly, and he goes out of bounds. In the direction of Perryman. But not there. Now they have to go ahead and let Morton Anderson have a go at it. I remember the last time he had a go at it, it was blocked by Monty Coleman. Morton Anderson counting his seven yards. He's marking it right there with his left foot. He's going to tell his holder, you hold it right there. Hanson is, Hanson is the holder. Let's see how good he is. Let's see how good he is. Turf. Nobody back. That's going to get there. No, it isn't. Wide right. Four seconds remain. And the Redskins put this one in the pocket. I'll tell you, both of these teams played their heart out here today, Pat. I mean, the Redskins were that team that was backed up. They had to do it. As you look at these guys walk off the field here, they gave everything they had, and they left everything they have out there. They didn't hold anything back today, neither team did. Neither team. Dave Butts in those trenches for all those many years. Has to be a very satisfying day for him as he breaks the record for the most games in a Redskin uniform. Look at the guy standing right by his side. That's his son, David. He's the first guy down the ground. So the Redskins stay in the chase, and so do the Saints. TBS. John Madden, then this is Pat Summerall saying so long from RFK Stadium in Washington, D.C., where the final score is the Redskins 27, the Saints 24. You've been watching CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League.